And hey, 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 what? What's going on, world? You already know what it is. It is time for another edition of the New Blurred Order right here for Blurred Church on a Saturday. You know what it do. And we are happy today to present to you a special guest that we've got in the building. We definitely want to wrap with our guests. But before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about who we've got with us. I am your boy. Obviously, it's me, the real Vince Taylor. And shout out to you for being out there and watching. And we are joined by none other than Gaz in the building. What's going on, Gaz? We've got Steph Word Nerd in the building. What's poppin', Steph? We've even got Mr. Bad Ty in the building. What's up, Ty? And Tippy Star Child is in the hit house. What's going on, Tippy the Star Child? Not me frozen. <laughs> what the look is looking at all that is doing? And we also have a special guest, everybody. For those, hey, there she is. For those of y'all who are unaware, yes, we've been promoting and we've been letting y'all know that we wanted to be joined today by none other than a man who needs no introduction. Obviously, you've seen him in Luke Cage. You've seen him even in Cowboy Bebop. But he's got an album out right now, and we definitely want to talk about that. Before we get into the works, why don't you go ahead and introduce us, Miss Yvette. Tell them it is what it is, where you can. All right. Oh, wait, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. It's it's just I love the new blurred order. You should do. <laughs> Let me get all this ten p wang. All the niggas rapping about the same old thing. I've been coming through with the same old gang. Ain't shit changed except nine got a name. Got it out the mud, but we got no stains. Cold ass bitches with a gold ass chain. The girl call me daddy, not my government name. Money on my mind, got them bands on my brain. Let me tell y'all about a nigga I know. The nigga stay clean, so y'all ain't got hoes. All righty, guys, as I said before, we appreciate you pulling up because we are joined today by none other than a superstar, especially in the nerd realm. We respect and love this man for some of the roles that you've seen him in the past. Like I said, you've seen him in Emancipation. You've seen him in Cowboy Bebop, even alongside my man, Michael Coulter, in the Luke Cage series, but more importantly, my man is a whole bar specialist, like a wordsmith himself, and y'all gonna learn today. I hope y'all will help me welcome for the first time on the program, it is none other than Mr. Moose Tapa Shakur, a.k.a. Moose! Hey. <laughs> What's going on, man? It's good to see you. How's everything going in your neck of the woods? How's your day going so far, fam? Oh, my day has been amazing. Uh, got up real early. Went for a bike ride downtown and I fell into a race. It was like a big, it was a whole thing. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, this is motivation. I wouldn't have had all of this energy if it wasn't for y'all. So that was cool. Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, am I to understand that you were bike riding and ended up doing the 5K? A lot of yeah, more than the 5K, actually. <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah, it was nice. It was nice. Oh, Didn't man. expect it. So my day's going great so far. You know. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well, man, listen. Uh, again, we are honored. We're completely, completely thrown and and happy that you were willing to join us today, man. Especially after you, it just feels like you' busy right now. You know what I'm saying? And uh, with a man as multiple talents like yourself, it's got to be hard to have to choose. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not just anything. You're a whole bunch. You're not only acting in some of these iconic roles but also you out here spitting homeboy like you got bars like for real like it's a whole thing like i'm curious like as a man that has multiple talents how do you choose which ones you want to put to the forefront you know what i'm saying like how do you know when you want to be a rapper or how it is you know or when you're going to go ahead and do it act or do you just do whatever comes in the moment well yeah i mean the, the latter i mean ultimately you learn through trial and error that uh things speak in you at different moments in time and you just flow with that and you find your alignments and yeah. But obviously early on is, it's just a struggle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're like, got all these competing voices and shit, you know? So yeah, but I mean, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. The struggle. I mean, does it, does it wear on you? Like as an artist, like, man, should I even be putting my energy into this script? 
when I should be in the studio? Like, does that like mess with you at times? Or is it just like, trust the process, trust the process, move, you got this? I mean, both, right? I think it's always the answer, both. Like, I trust the process, but also sometimes, you know, you feel called to do one thing when you're doing another thing. And, and that's just the part of life, you know what I mean? Um, I ain't trying to get it right all the time. <laughs> you. You. <laughs> is, is music your first love? You know, I can't say no, it wasn't. It wasn't. No, you know, I got inspired in a really weird way. It wasn't even like direct. I sort of just fell into it by somebody else, you know. Um, I was 12 years old, quick story, in, in North Carolina. A white dude by the name of Matthew Pruden, like, <laughs> he turned me on. Everybody's like, you from New York? You from New York? After they, you know, asked me to talk so they could hear my accent, they was like, you need to talk to Matthew Pruden. And uh, uh, they linked us and I walked over, this guy had like the Coke bottle glasses, but he had bars, he had notebooks around. And we just, we just became friends and joined a little, I mean, we made a little, little click that lasted for like all the four months because I was only down there for a year. And, um, but from that moment on, I just, I kept rhyming. I get, got back to the city and it, it, was, it was just on and popping. So it was an interesting entrance into hip hop. Like I, I, it didn't start, like I loved hip hop, but I had to leave New York, go to North Carolina, link with a, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Somebody who was not a typical hip hop Ian, you know what I mean? To come back and then, then you know, continue the journey. So fascinating, bad yeah, time. Man. Can you well, believe? No, no, I can't. Keep no, going I, I can't. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, so you went to the mecca of hip hop, North Carolina. Uh, <laughs> 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 nah, but that, like that's 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 an interesting story. But I mean, it's it's it seems like because you're not the the first guest that we've had that comes from North Carolina, but has has roots from North Carolina, but was raised up north. Uh, we had another guest that was also that. So I'm I'm starting to see that North Carolina. <laughs> Might be that, that that hub. We got J. Cole coming out of there. We, oh, is York? that the new? Is that the new New York? <laughs> it, it, I mean, they they got a big ego down there. You go to Raleigh with Knife Wonder and everybody, they feel like, and what? You know what I mean? Like, we've been doing it. We will continue doing it. And I'm like, yeah, talk talk your shit, you know. Um, but yeah, it's it's popping down in North Carolina and always has. It's just New York overshadowed everybody. This is why everybody hates New York now. But uh, you know, that's another story. Come on and mm. raise up. Take a flag. Like, y'all don't know. <laughs> North Carolina have been out here. Yeah, it's real. It is. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I listen to uh, Harlem, the biopic, um, there's, a, there's a style that you embody that is true to me, a hip hop head that I, that I think is, is worth mentioning. And like you said before, like sometimes these styles are out there, but right now you got to look a little, for, you know, got to look, got to look for them a little more, especially Mo, if you don't mind when you're doing what I think shouldn't be rare, which is bigging up black people in your music, like your music, when you listen to it, it gives you strength <laughs> as a black person. You know, like you're saying constantly things like I told you before, I love the line. Call me Shaka, not De Niro. You're you're dropping a lot of historical references in your music. What's what's the motivation here, man? And and, and like, uh, you know, what 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 is it that you would, you know, uh, you know, attribute to, you know, making that something that should be in your music? And do you think that more of the youngins should do more of this? I mean, oof, you, you asked three questions in there. So, like, uh, the first question is. Um, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, well, I feel like a large part of just my growth as an artist or as a human being, more importantly, is reclaiming that which made me and taking off all of the, the stickers and the banners that have been applied to me. You know what I mean? So like renaming myself. Um, and I feel like in hip hop, you know, and, and I'm not and I, I'm not shitting on anybody because I feel like every, everything has its place. But, you know, people are calling themselves Italian people, anything and everything. Wow. But, you know, Africa or, or, or that which is, you know, of, of melanated of the melanated persuasion. So I feel like I feel like wherever possible, you know, it's, it's time to take our take the power back. You know, um, like I don't want to be a Gambino. Like, why? Cool. You know, they never, they never say, let me be a, you know, what have you, neighbor, in, in Kruma, you know what I mean? So like, mm. 
and, and not that that matters. I'm not going tip for tat for them. Big love to the Italians. I love everybody. But um, for, for the sake of my own self, I just want to be proud of who I am and where I come from. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Speak, speak. That's, that's what we need to hear more of, frankly. Um, does that still, as you portray this, this positive black image that we love for people like us, we call ourselves blurred black nerds. We yeah. noticed that... that yeah, we, we we that's that's who we are. I mean, I hope, I hope that's okay. No, I said um, I love it. I know. Yeah. I, I, I'm, all right. I'm cool. aware of what blurred means here. I'm on myself. Because <laughs> there was a bar. Ty, what's the bar? It was. The, no. Go ahead. Go ahead and drop the all bar right. right quick. Because this all one right. right here. I don't know if this if everybody would catch this. All right. So I I, I had the pleasure of listening to Masterpiece Theater, and and yeah. one of the, one of the songs, um, which is I think um, Golden Child, okay. which which is fire number one. Yeah. But there's a verse in there that only a specific group will will, will catch, and it's and you say, you say, um, yeah, I got guns, I got a few, um, three, four, five, three, four, six, five. six, six three, four, I think it's like oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's, it, it's oh, a good dimension. I'm 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 cueing the shift. Yeah, cueing the shift. I'm cueing the shift, and I, as soon as I heard that, as a person who is a trekkie. I was like, yeah. hold on a second. I know he didn't just drop that and think that was going to go over my head. I was Star like, yo, Wars? yo, that's he what it's about the Easter eggs, man. Like, <laughs> I, I live for the Easter egg. You know what I mean? So if you pay attention, I'm burying them everywhere. Like, I, that's 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 why I do it. Because, it, damn, that's the part that haunts me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm myself, I'm not a Trekkie. But seeing the enjoyment y'all got from that, <laughs> that was real nice. Oh, child, you, you. Yeah. I screamed. Right, right, right. I, I, yeah, I screamed out. I screamed. I was like, "Hold up, hold up, yo, yo!" Because, because, because again, we talk about this all the time, man. I, right. Especially on this show, is being a blur, but also being part of the urban community. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's like it's those those two don't always line up. You know what I'm saying? So it's usually a conflict. So when you hear somebody who embodies the urban community with the rap style and, 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 and everything like that, but then being able to implement these these little Easter eggs for the for the culture, for the, the blurs that, you know what I'm saying? When I heard that, I was like, this is was already fire, but you just you just really just got a fan. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just became a fan in that moment, man. And and yeah, I, man. man, I just want to hear. What, That's what, what it's what, all about. Yeah. What you say? I was just saying. I wanted to hear what you was when you came up with that bar, and you know what I'm saying because that 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 is a huge bar. When you came up with that bar, and you was like, "I'm gonna throw this in here." I bet you ain't nobody gonna. I know you was like, "I bet you ain't nobody gonna catch this." <laughs> I mean, I, I know that if I'm out there, there's at least. I mean, if I'm here, it's at least another one out there. So yeah. I'm, it's for them. You know what I mean? Like for you, for, for whoever can catch it. Yeah. But like, yeah, I mean, the thought behind it was like, everybody's always talking about how dangerous they are, you know what I mean? And I was like, how do you talk about being dangerous without being like as literal and overt and like kind of crude, quite honestly? So I was like, how do you, you know, I'll, I'll fuck you up interdimensionally, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you can't mess with my quantum skills, you know? Like, hey, man. You know. That's what I'm talking about. What's up, Steph? I have so many things I'd like to ask. I'm going to keep it to two questions for the sake of time. But first off, just um, I was familiar with your work as an actor. Vince put me on to your music. Very, very much my vibe. I love rap genius. I'm super into the Easter eggs like you were talking about. So when I hear something new that I love, the first thing I want to do is go online and figure out like, oh, what does this mean? What are the theories? So to have you here that I can directly ask you is yeah. very exciting. Um, one of the first lines that really stood out to me hugely was on his eyes. You said, they say, tell the truth or the people can't feel you. And that lines up so much with our philosophy here because Vince says in every single episode, be your authentic self. If you're not being your true self, you're being fake. Um, so I'm really interested in hearing as a Black man who's clearly very much for the culture from Harlem, also a graduate of the new school, a vegan, Ooh. a performer, how have you found it rewarding and or challenging to be your authentic self in this industry? Mm -hmm. wow. that's a big one um you wow <laughs> people say, <laughs> people say well, it's a great question people say like where'd you go to school at you know for acting and i was like well you know life uh 
wow. you know, because you have to, I was like, that's the best school. Like Yale couldn't tell me nothing. Um, because yeah, and that's that's a large part of technique. You got to know your audience, right? And so I've spent, the, and, and, and a lot of black people understand that in terms of wearing a mask, but you know, you, you move accordingly. Um, but when it comes down to, the, the thing that with me is I never compromise my integrity. So I don't feel any way about playing to audiences. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, there comes a time when like, you know, some of the real, real slips out and you just got to be okay with that. Um, but I feel like a part of my own like journey has been to lead with that and let people be more uncomfortable in, in some spaces. Mm. Um, it's a time for that now. Like you, you can't do that the entire time. Like, so anybody out there, you can't just come in the door with your guns out. You got to come in your, see what's there, survey the scene, go back, draw up your blueprints, and then, you know, strategically come with your guns out. But, um, you know, that, you know, figuratively saying that, yeah, just showing up like in spaces where they would normally be, um, not so keen to see me the way that I, I truly am. And, 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 and I've been doing that, you know, here and there, but yeah, it, it is a struggle. It's not something that comes supernaturally, you know, uh, it does come supernaturally, but that's hey, another. Hey, I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, yeah. So I'm I'm gaining more comfort in that regard, you know, because there's there's a lot of there's a lot of levels to me, you know. Um, as you talked about that conflict between being in a urban environment and being and being like you know ab about it, a thinker, you know, um, and sort of navigating that. Um, yeah, so you know, to be continued. To be continued. I love it. Actually, to, love to continue to follow up on that, um, just in line with you being such a multifaceted individual, another one of the lines that really, really stood out and stuck with me was, I needed a nurse, but got a notebook. And you also talk later about, I don't want to misquote the exact line, but about like using metaphors and allegories to be heard when people are ignoring what you're saying. And that really resonated with me as well. So I'd just love to hear anything you want to share about your journey of using art to express yourself and how as, you know, a black man in this world where mental health is often not prioritized for us and especially for y'all, music might have been an outlet in that way. Yeah, it always has been. Like it started with poetry without beats, you know, um, it, it, it was a way that, and it happened, I can't even tell you like there was some specific moment. I really can't, you know, recall at, at this moment in time, but I knew that every time something major would come up emotionally, like, I could write it down or I could write something and I could feel that catharsis happen through it. And so it just became the way to deal with things. Um, and growing up in, uh, the, in Harlem in, in the, the you know, 80s, 90s, where it was cray cray all the time, like I found myself <laughs> with, with lots of work because I was constantly <laughs> transmuting all of this stuff that was coming through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's that line right there. I needed a nurse, but I got a notebook. I mean, if if I was if I was in a white community, they, I would have been in therapy like from mm -hmm. 11 on. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? They would have been taking care of me. Um, but just just, you know, you know, it's like somebody was even talking about this the other day. Like you get 14 years old as a black male. And if you sprout up too high or even if you don't like you're a man now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now we, we, we we're threatened by you. We don't want to help you. Like this is all this stuff that ultimately does affect your mental health. So like my only outlet was art, wow. you know, to, to, to really say the things that um, were, were going on in me. And I felt like even in that, I found myself being real cryptic. You know what I mean? Like when I read back over things, because, yeah, I didn't I was figuring it out, you know. But uh, I'm I'm grateful because I, I did figure out quite a bit of things uh, through that process. You know, it, it's so powerful to listen to a, a powerful, well-renowned black man speak about the the necessities of of mental health and and what it is that you do therapeutically to keep yourself. You know, what I'm saying from having to deal with the ills of the world, especially in this country. If I could keep it real, um, I feel like you also specifically are able to channel that into your acting. 
Like, you know, you're the some of the roles that I know you for are strong black men roles. You know what I'm saying? Like and, and it and it speaks to who you are. Do you do you do you keep that into consideration when auditioning for roles or when being considered for roles? Like, listen, I need to be portrayed or we need to portray black men as such. Otherwise, I'm not interested. Or is that nothing? Um, more and more. That's again, like you can't just go through the front door with the gun out at first. You know what I mean? Like right, you right. won't make it very far. They won't be asking you any questions about what you want. <laughs> you know, your preference won't matter. <laughs> but you know, as I continue down the, the you know, in the journey and gaining more um, I don't know, pull power exactly, or you know, et cetera. Um, yeah, that's totally it. It's like if we're not, the, the, you know, creating images that spark a feeling of empowerment in people, of or just you know, you know, catalyst for them to think. I don't like. What am I doing? You know, what am I doing? Right. So that's super important for me. I th I feel like there's been a certain level of serendipity in terms of the roles that I've I've, I've gotten, and I feel like, and uh, many other actors who talk about this, like some roles reflect you in a way that you don't know and you learn about yourself through that but a lot of them are reflections of, of character that you already kind of are in touch with and so like i feel like the stronger you are in touch with those things the more you see that reflected in your career and i feel like that is what you um, are talking about you know in, in a lot of regards it's it's trippy actually <laughs> when you get out to it. but it works out uh Okay, go ahead. I'd love Steph. to lean in that just a little bit more, real quick. Just this mm -hmm. idea of knowing when to pull your guns out. Is there a specific moment or moments that, as your platform and influence have grown, that you've been able to kind of push for the culture in anything that you're working on? Oh yeah, for sure. There's a there's been a lot of little moments, but the most recent one, and I think that since we've already talked about it, was Emancipation. They sent me the script for it, and they were like, "We want you to read for this particular role," and I I read it. And I was like, the, the script itself was just so um, amazingly written that I was I was pulled. But like when I got to the dude that they wanted me to play, I was like, damn, mm. you know, you know, <laughs> you know like <laughs> you read a little bit more. I see, and I was like, mm, no. And then I was like, Will Smith, you know, uh, uh, Antoine Fuqua. I was like, mm. I was like, yeah, that's the universe. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> ain't gonna be able to do it. And so I told I told the I told my, my my reps that and they told the casting director and blew my mind. They were like, uh, so which role could you see yourself playing? Wow. Nice. Wow. I was like, okay, jump in and that will appear. Um <laughs> uh, other than Peter. Oh, okay, okay. okay. He's one of us. One of us. One of us. Other than Peter, there's this other character, you know, Caillou, but I already researched him and he's supposed to be like um, biracial and all this stuff, right? So I was like, I don't know if that fits into your narrative. But uh, uh, two minutes, emails later, and it was like, no, put yourself, you know, you can do Caillou. And so, yeah, and it was just like that. And so then when, you know, like, I, everything that he stands for, I, the, this, I was just like, yes, I have no problem being in a slave movie if this is the depiction. Cause you know, you can't be so picky that you take yourself out the game. You got to change the game from within the game. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's one of the, that's one of the downfalls of being like a, re a, a revolutionary. You can revolutionary yourself right on the sidelines and not doing nothing. You got to be more viral and get in yeah. the system and infect. So. Wherever I can do that, and that was a good example of it, um, and me stand, you know, sticking to my guns, um, if you will, and uh, it worked out. I think, you know, I'm glad that did. Bad tie. Yeah. Look, man, I, Mustafa, I'm about to get a little personal. I, I, I'm not. I, I hope. I hope this doesn't get too personal. But I know in the, in the 70s and the 80s, it was tough in Harlem. Uh, you know, growing up, that was that was that was a, a an era when it was the get money era. It was a lot of drugs. It was a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Um, who were the integral parts of keeping you out of those mixes and 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 keeping your head level level and and on a swivel? Uh, who were who were the most integral parts in your life? Uh, you know, coming up. I mean, I got to give it. You know, I got to give up. You know, credit to spirit overall. You know, um, whatever you call it, you know, God, Yahweh. But 
um, I've always felt guided, you know, and I, I wasn't immune to any of that stuff. I had my, you know, I had my run in with, um, with crack, you know, but then through that run in, I saw where I was going. And I've always been astute enough to put, you know, A, B, C, you know, one, two, three, X, Y. I was able to, to figure out things and learn from other people's mistakes. And so I just saw like some of my favorite dudes like blow up and become empowered and pedestaled and then in front of us all just be decapitated. And I was like, yep, yeah, I see that two or three times and like, I'm good. You know what I mean? So, and then there was moments where I tried to touch things because, you know, desperation will lead you there. And, and I was not immune to that. But like my hand would get smacked by the unseen hand and I would be like, oh, I can't even, oh, oh. That was so loud, <laughs> I, I, you know, I can't ignore these, these prompts and these cues. So it was a lot of that, you know, and being a blurred myself, like I was in school, they, the teachers took a, took a, they noticed me. And for whatever reason, I always had like one teacher or two teachers that would be like, tell them about that program or something. So I was like, they were inviting me to these Upward Bound programs and these like summer camps. And, and, it, and like after a while, I saw it like, OK, this is a long journey. Like I can't get fast money, but they feed me. There's a lot of pretty girls around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's a good environment. Like I'm a, you know, so I would do my school thing real hard. But then, you know, I come back to the block, you know, get a little dirt on me. But there was always always something that that was calling for me, you know what I mean. And I try to bring my you know my boys and friends in, and you know they wouldn't. Uh, and I seen how that affected them, and that just was more inspiration. I was like, you know, I'm no different than y'all. So if that's happening to you, it's going to happen to me. And um, you know, it was just various little things. But I, I really think between you know God's guidance, however you want to you know put it, my own discernment, and like teachers along the way helping me out I just sort of like stayed away um and there was obviously moments where yeah it could have gone way 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 worse but uh it did, <laughs> it did. Well, I'm glad you did uh real quick let me get this time um so as a blurred yourself yeah. I mean it it's got to be like mind melting when you get to work in a project that you saw in a comic book. You know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. Or when you get to work in an anime. I'm wondering, like, when you did get to seal this this role as Jet, which is kind of be one of my favorite animes. I'm just going to keep it 100 percent. Did it throw you off or were you already expecting the bullshit backlash? from playing Jet, you know, and the folks, you know, because you know how it is. We know how it is in the United States. Like, folks is always, oh, the race flop, blah, blah, blah. Did you, did you, did you weather it well? Was it a surprise? Was it not even that big of a deal? No, I mean, I mean, fortunately, unfortunately for me, like, I got so much love for Jet. Yes! Like, they were, every, every article was like, this shit is a dumpster fire except for Jet Black. You know, like, <laughs> it kept happening. So, like, while I was like, oh, man, our baby is going down in flames, like, you know, they weren't saying bad, you know, stuff about me. So, you know, that was kind of helpful. Um, but, yeah, yeah, like, and I think, you know, I, I, I liked it, you know, and I, I love the anime, the original, you know? Yes. I mean, obviously, there were some things that could have been tightened up, but I feel like that was what the second season was for. So, I was like, yeah. y'all crazy. That's what I thought. I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like cognitive dissonance. I'm, I'm not, you know. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. that was crazy. And and for and for Luke and for Bushmaster as well. Like, is there any like? I mean, do you? If I, being regular old me, get the any type of opportunity to work on these projects, I think I'd hit the ceiling as a blurred. Like, it's not just an acting gig. It's like, hold on, I'm representing the culture and this shit came out. Like, does it hit you like that too, bro? Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, I have this thing where, like, for the longest time, I'm just starting to, like, research directors. Like, I, like, I, I just focus on what's in front of me and don't think about anything else. And then once I break through, then I allow it to hit me. But, like, when it finally it it took I, I had like two callbacks and da 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 da, da, da and they had and I waited two weeks before they gave me a phone call and I mean I had already gotten it but it was after the phone call when I hung up is when like 
yeah, I just sort of went full tart, like, you know, in the, <laughs> in the middle of the, the room, like on my knees, like, you know, like fully, like, but like, that's it. That's, that, that's also the hood for you. You know, it's like delayed gratification. You know what I mean? Looking around, waiting for the shoes drop. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it goes without saying, it's just been a, a major, 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 you know, high for me. You know, being able to play, you know, characters like that because it's like it's in the lexicon. You know, it's forever that now. You know, and so yeah. that's cool. Yeah, it's canon. And I mean, I would make a, a a snarky comment about you being from Harlem, but beating up Harlem superhero. <laughs> uh, but we'll lay, we'll 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 we'll, <laughs> we'll leave really that know. one for speculation. <laughs> That's because I don't get that role. That's why. I should have been Luke Cage. I was kidding. All right, Todd. Just a couple. Just a yeah, little bit. This is my, this my last question. This is my last question. Mustafa. Right. A lot of people might may not know this, but you you audition for the roles of Black Lightning and also uh, Word Nerd Steph's favorite character, Mbaku. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, so so when I'm hearing this and I and I see the the kind of passion that you have for a jet black this I, 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 I've heard you the whole the whole interview talk about how much of a blurred you are but mm -hmm. we have not really connected with that blurred them like we need to know like who's your favorite characters within the Marvel Universe DC Universe I mean who who did you grow up like yo this is my dude right here who was yeah it? like I had a I had a weird entrance right so like the things that are subconsciously like I'm most attached to are not the normal interest point. So I started with Alpha Flight, right? And okay, like, that was yeah, I know, right? And I was like, the twins <laughs> were my favorite. They were like, not, not like I was like, you know, it was so I had, I had a weird interest. And then you know, um, from Alpha Flight, um, Spider Man obviously came in into the mix. And then like, because I was I was doing this by stealing my brother's comic books, and then he had like Marvel <laughs> Universe. You know, Marvel Universe was my. Sh I mean. You know what I mean? Like just mm -hmm. going through, I think I studied everybody's strength and their powers and their speeds mm. and like, yeah, it, it, it got pretty deep. But yeah, so the, the things that when I, when I think about like my, my, my love and my first beginnings, like my, you know, the, my comfort blanket, it, it's Alpha Flight, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I know. It's, every time I tell people that, they're like, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fascinating one. Yeah, it's it's certainly appreciated. We 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 don't have all day, unfortunately, this particular time. We're hoping you'll come back. Yes, is it, is it quick? Yes, because my man yes, got money. Got a quick. time crunch. Quickly, quickly. Moo, I just want to know, like, ten minutes if you if you know, like. Oh, okay. Uh, Moo, I just want to know since you know you were still in your brother's you know Marvel comic books. Um, who is your favorite, and who were who did you inspire? You know, like. What power did you want? You know what I'm saying? Because you know, every every kid, we we, I'm just gonna let you know, mine's flying. I'm, I I want storms power. I want yeah. the, I want the weather. I'm Mother Nature totally, like hundred percent. Yeah, I'm like I'm the mashup guy, man. Like I wanted all like like flying, mm -hmm. obviously, but I love like rogues power. I love the idea of like tasting different things. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what is it? <laughs> I'm like a hodgepodge for sure. Um, I can relate to the Hulk, you know, totally. Um, hey. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, you know, mild-mannered, but like, you know. Who's going to be in the party talking about, hey, buddy, touching the shoulders and stuff. Like, you know, just like, what's this? That's That's so, Go ahead, Steph. Oh, I was just clipping. That's all. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, well, that's crazy, man. I mean, so so when you get to, like, you jump up and down, you get on yeah. set, now mm -hmm. it's happening. Now you're seeing other superheroes like you on set as well. And you got, and I can just assume that, I mean, I saw there's a picture of you and uh and, and Michael uh kind of baddying around. I mean, y'all y'all still keep in touch. I mean, everything's still yeah, good. Me, I, like, the funny thing is, man, yeah, we actually, because, you know, you be cool with people during projects and then, you know, you still cool, but it tapers off. But nah, me and Mike, it's like, we talk every, every day, damn man. You know? Damn. Um, well, you know, through memes and shit. You know, hey, it's I like, <laughs> we, we, got, yeah, we got a meme relationship. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's oh, yeah. every day. Because, you know, social media is every day. So, yeah. just about, yeah, but yeah. Mike's That's cool. dope, man. I, I am curious um, about this. 
So you did on the Luke Cage set. There's so much stuff that goes on. And I don't, I don't want to dwell too much on just this cage. But unfortunately, such a monumental show with such huge acts, uh, one of which is no longer with us. I don't know if you had an opportunity to work um, uh, uh, with my man. But uh, uh, could you, did you have any experience here? Was there anything that we don't know? Uh, with yeah. Uh, oh, my God. I see my, my screen. Oh, it's Kathy. Up. Reggie Kathy. Yeah, but yeah, Reg, Reg, Kathy, yes, he, he's, Reg. he's left us. I mean, is there anything that happened that I feel like his, like, that we should know? Because he, you know, he seemed like a quiet man, but he did such big things. And you were on set too, right? Yeah, man. Um, I got a cool story with him, but like, yeah, he was a powerhouse. Um, one mm. of those, like, Gene Hackman kind of actors, like, been in everything, destroying it, but like, you know, not the level of Denzel fame. Um, but funny enough, it was him passing that I um, I realized that I had gone to high school. I went, I went down to North Carolina um, for tenth grade, and I went to high school with with his um, with his uh, I believe it's his granddaughter. Um, uh, yeah, and and had a crush on her, and we uh, and I, I was chasing her around. I was like, the yo, ladies, yo, oh, you know, I had to hit her up, you know. Like, like, How you know Reggie was your you know, <laughs> funny enough. Funny. Uh, uh, to, uh, real quick, these this this last one. I know you said you only had a few more minutes, so we definitely want to respect that. But in addition to him, I really am curious about the exchange that went on when you met one of who I think is a certified blurred as well, and also a huge hip hop influence, uh, um, uh, uh, to Cal. Uh, uh, and did you drop a bar for him? I, why am I picturing you being like, "Yo, yo, meth"? It, remember, you know, uh, you know, and then just giving him one of his <laughs> verses like PLO style, would have all no, the <laughs> I have this weird thing where I never tell rappers that I rap. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's a stupid rule. It's subconscious. I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah. So he met the man. Probably doesn't know I rap at all. Um, but we had great exchanges. We had like deep exchanges. Talked about marriage and how long he's been with his wife, and you know the the, the pros and cons of all of it. Um, yeah, he even named, he gave me a Wu-Tang name. What's it? Um, the Irate Professional. The irate? The irate, <laughs> irate Professional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Method is cool as shit, man. Let me say yeah. that. Big shout out to Method Man. One of the, like, warmest, present people that I've ever met in the industry. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. yeah. He'll spoil you. You think it's all like that. It ain't. You know what I mean? He's definitely a gem. The mm. irate professional, the irate professional, yeah. No, there's no story <laughs> like that's a well, quite a particular name. They have a, a generator, like a Wu name generator, based oh, on something. Oh, okay. And so, <laughs> based on that, mine was irate professional. And so, okay. I was like, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did you get irate oh, wow. with you know? Cliff? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and uh, my last question, uh, is uh, another soul that we that we lost too soon was Michael K. And I see you did some work with the man. What's something about him that we should know that we don't? I met Michael when I was 18. Um, mm -hmm. I used to be a barber. Mm -hmm. I was, well, you're a, once a barber, always a barber. Always but a I, I made my own make it, it was a, <laughs> as a barber. And I worked with I worked at Gerard DeRay Salon, which had in hindsight was like the mixture of like barbershop and fame together. Um, and like literally every, I've met so many industry people that will come through there. But anyway, Mike, I met there and um, he was, the, when he used to come down on like Fridays and like after we was, it was time to clean up, we'd all jump in a car and go clubbing, you know what I'm saying, dancing. And he used to dance with like all the, like I believe it was like Madonna and Janet Jackson and all that stuff. So like, you know, I met him as a dancer. But then he turned out to um, do this play called um, Endangered Species, which was like, um, it, it was the, 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 the Hamilton of, of Harlem at the time, you know, that level of uh, importance. And um, I went to see him, you know, do this role. And I remember I wasn't acting yet. And I remember thinking, I need to go ahead and do this. It was because of Michael K. Um, mm -hmm. I was watching him and Gano Grills, which he doesn't, he doesn't act as much now. 
But um, he's also part of the Wu-Tang. He does all that artwork and stuff. But um, I, I went to see them do the play, and I was like, I need to do this. And I wound up uh, doing that play two years later, funny enough, in the lead role. Um, it was from, from that moment. But yeah, man, working with him again, um, he's just... I mean, his journey was insane. Like from when I met him to what he became, and it, it like we was we was like struggling in the in the in the you know struggling hard. Like everybody was scra scraping for what you know their scraps, and um, it, he just burst through. You know, nobody saw it coming. Nobody saw it coming. Um, not not in that regard. But yeah, Mike, I love him, man. I um, you know he did his thing. Uh, you know, you can't be sad for when it's time to go. But like, yeah, he made his mark, and uh, you know, I'm proud of him. Yeah. Steph, Steph, please. A, a final support and admin question. Um, I found and enjoyed your music on Apple Music, but it didn't look like it had all of the album. I would love to hear the rest of it. So, where can we find your music? Where would you prefer that we buy your music? You know, what I mean. What's the spot that's going to give you the best, the best feedback and royalties? And how else can we in our community support your work? Um, well, tell somebody. I'll go from the, the end to the end. Like, tell, you know, tell people, you know, if you if you love it and you feel like somebody would dig something too, just, you know, spread the word that way. Um, the album actually drops on August 28th. So oh. the that's why all of the songs are not there. Um and all these links are in on IG. So you can um go to Bandcat and buy it for like seven bucks. And that's that that's best for me. Um, but you know, it streams on every other platform that uh, that there is available. Um, after the 28th, everything will be available there. Uh, I think that's I think that's it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, Thank well you on the 28th. Yes, and we already you already got five sales uh, at bare minimum. Uh, <laughs> I guarantee you that right here. Uh, yeah, man, we are we are fully in support of our blurred family, man, and we consider you a part of this, even if it's distant cousin wise right now. We're gonna get you to the cookout one of these neighbors to the good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, unless there's anything else, we gotta let Moo get back to making the money, man, and being and being the influencer that he is. I just want to say this last piece. This is not a question. This is a comment. I hope that you are aware of how influential and impactful you are as an entity to exist in the realm of Blurred and still spit like you spit, to still be able to rep the culture, not take no bullshit, force your way in to show us what's going on. But also, man, with your roles, I don't know if you're, I mean, as a Blurred, you're already fully aware that now because you took these roles, we can cosplay as characters that we loved growing up that didn't look like us. You know what I'm saying? And to see a season two with two black, like a whole black cast, whole I just want to sure, if, if you have not heard it yet, you need to hear from us that we see you, we appreciate the shit out of you, and our lives are better with you repping the way that you do, homeboy. So, man, big ups to you for repping for the culture. Thanks so much for blessing us with a little bit of your time. I don't know, you know, if if we made you comfortable enough for you to ever come back and give us 30 more minutes, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, say I would we'll definitely see. come back, man. You guys were amazing. I love your energy. You know what I'm oh, saying? Man. Like, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, would you... Yeah. Say, say what? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Please, please. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's it. Like, I mean, that's that's generally it. I mean, it was cool to come rock with y'all. I love what you're doing. Great questions. You know what I mean? Keep going. And and thank you for for the for the affirmation. All that shit. No. <laughs> would would you, you be so kind? Our, our group's called the New Blurred Order. Would you would you be so kind since you feel so cool about us to say something nice about us so that we can like have this moment forever? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay, the new blurred order. All right, you know what? I'm okay. Not um, listen, it's all about the new blurred order. Like, think up, think out, be yourself, express yourself. And this is what they're doing. Um, I'm in love. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> well, listen, man. On that last note before you leave. Come on, show it. Yeah, show it. Yeah, so we, had a little, we did a little um, something right so quick. I made you something to go along with your inspiration. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. <laughs> it's an official it's an official new blurred order shirt so that way you can be a part of the crew with us um i just got to get your crazy. deeds um just you know vince or i will hit you up to um get the location of where you want us to mail it but you're officially part of the crew that's so dope yo <laughs> thank you guys yeah <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> I said we're gonna send it to Harlem. Uh, yeah, you got to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, All good. right, man. Let's let Mr. Moo Moo. Thanks again, man. Thank you all again thank for joining. You. Don't go to worry, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and let Moo go. But thank you all for tuning in to his interview. Mr. Moo, we're gonna go ahead and check off uh one last time. Uh, and we will continue to talk a little bit about what just happened because I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. Moo was a was a cool ass motherfucker. And it was cool to be able to rap with him for a little bit. Uh, Steph, pull up with the questions. What's I just, up, Steph? Yaz, that shirt was dope. I just want to take a minute to give Yaz her flowers because that was <laughs> amazing. That was very cool. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. we yeah we we tried to you know do a little something for the boy. You know, I was what saying? saying that was uh, Vince's and my creation. We meshed together, so I got I got to give you know my flowers to my to my man. You know, and you know give <laughs> give do where it's due. But yeah, that was a, that was a collab. We uh we decided to make sure that we 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 stuck through it real quick. So nah, but I couldn't do it without Yaz, and that's the beauty of us as a team is that you know we all kind of you know we're we're you know we all have different parts of the body and we each make up a part, you know what I'm saying? And we can't function fully without fully functional body parts. All right. That's that analogy just got, it sounds really weird yeah. saying it out loud. It you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, but, uh, but, but uh, not to stay here too long, cause we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna do the whole show right now, but could we at least talk about what we just learned? Like I, what do we take away from this interview? I personally learned that, he auditioned for Mbaku. I, I didn't know about, you know didn't know about that, man. Like, Yo, yeah, he 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 actually interviewed for the role of Black Lightning. So he could have been Black Lightning, or he wow. could have been Steph's love interest in Baku. He could have, <laughs> you know, the, I mean, I, I'm sure the the thighs wouldn't have been dying like you know they they do. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know how do you see how do you see his know. dances. I don't know. <laughs> Check out Instagram. Check out his dances. I don't know. He got the eyes, you know. He got the eyes. Hey, hey, and baby. Boobs. Baby. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, uh, what did we not get to ask him that we may have wanted to ask him? What's up, Steph? Um, you mentioned marriage. Are you married or like what's your situation? Damn. So I was trying to be professional. Question. But <laughs> were you? The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, The people were not for me. Oh I'm sure the fans want to know. That's Listen, absolutely. that's for round two, Steph. That's for round two when we have more time. All right. <laughs> Tiffy, Tiffy, it was, it was, it was interesting. Uh, seeing. <laughs> Did, um you react to us in our Star Trek bars. Um, so are you officially gonna <laughs> gonna watch a little bit of Star Trek now? I don't know. You don't have to answer that. I just oh, no, that I, I, I'm not an anti. I think I would probably get into Star Trek more than I would Star Wars, to be honest. Because like Star Trek was always just on um, yeah. Hold on, uh, yeah. Uh, Hold on, let us let us let us let us, let us <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> because Star Trek, like there's some there's some familiarity then. Like that was one that was always okay. on in the house. So it was on in the background. And with the recent movies, they're not terribly recent now, but you know, more recent than most. But the Star Trek movies with Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto and things like that. I've seen those, and I've still seen nothing of Star Wars that have that has stuck. Like, oh, okay. and, and that's just my pro don't don't act shocked. I feel like we've had this conversation. Let's not, I feel <laughs> like I feel like there's this, I feel like there's a disdain for Star Wars in your household right now, and we have to we, we need to we need to talk not, about this. I'm not sure why we just we just weren't a Star Wars household. Okay. I and I have a lot of friends that are big Star Wars heads, and so and they they all have this reaction. I've been to yeah. one watch party where we tried to watch some of the Star Wars, but my old nemesis Tequila was present. Tequila would be a Sith I, Lord for my life. Growing up, my my entire <laughs> Oh, um, it was it was so bad, and that and I and I have no recollection of that movie. <laughs> so this might be why this might be why you don't watch Star Wars because like your your only memory of it is you, know, you getting sick off tequila. You see what I'm saying? And, and I'm I'm just so triggered, and I'm like, oh, 
back and I'm like, oh, it means something different for me. I would do it again, though. In fact, I'm going to write it down. So I'm taking notes for what I want to start for my Patreon. I would do watch parties. And like okay. a Star Wars watch party could be a fun thing. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Let us let us be involved. And listen, yeah. um, I, I for one have gone past like the, the vitriol reaction that Yaz had public like outwardly is the same Sorry. I used to when My people bad. used to talk about stuff. I get it. Now it's a little easier to accept because the world's so vast. Uh when it was yeah. just movies, I was kind of like, all right, come on, man, you know, but now it's 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 gotten a lot deeper, There's so we'll, so we'll get into that. And I know that we can't talk talk about it, but if there was a series I was going to jump in on and want to watch, it'd be Ahsoka. And that's why other weeks I've asked, I was like, "What do I what do I need to know to catch oh, up? Okay. Oh, okay. It's Rebels and, and Clone up. Wars. You got to watch Rebels and Literally. Clone Wars are the two things. But just keep in mind, Tiffy, they're thirty minute episodes, and Clone Wars has like seven seasons or something like that. It's got a lot of seasons. Um, do not and uh, my power. Rebels- of cash. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like what a sales pitch. Like, yo, by the I'm way, gonna, it's long I'm gonna warn her. <laughs> and at the end of the day, I might just jump into it raw. Ooh. Hey, that's the best oh way to go. That's the best way to go. Best way to go. All right. You know, it I have a question though, Tavi. Like as as an actress, you know, and and being in theater like you are, do you do you like productions? Because I know I, this may be a, a, a stupid question, but I don't know. But do you like productions that have that that per, like portray the theater side of it, like that give you like the musicals, the the like you know, like that, Hamlet those, and those shit type like, of, that, like that? Yeah. Are you asking what type of theater I prefer, like musical theater versus like straight plays? Oh, um, I think he's asking like if you like mu- musicals in theater, yeah. like in, in, in a movie theater. Yeah, it, that, like basically. I guess it'd be better to do this. There's there's a series. There's a series. I won't say the name of the series, but the series um, does have these moments where there it becomes theater production. It becomes more of a theater production. So everybody, it it, even though even though it is a a, a, an actual series or you know television series or whatever, the, the 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 production goes from television series to actual uh, actual theater oh. production and 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 I'm I'm curious are you interested well done in those Ty. well done yeah, well those- done friend <laughs> I, 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 I I personally am not like pressed either way when it comes to things like that like I don't prefer it or not prefer it, but mm-hmm. what you described and I know you're probably being vague for a reason but that sounds interesting I I would I would watch that okay well, that's well then, well, good. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk oh, off the air. Send it in the chat. Send it in the chat right now. <laughs> then we'll, we will plug you in. So you know what? You know what that like kind of just reminded me of when you were like describing that to Tiffy. Have you guys seen um the after party on Apple TV? Yes, I have. I have. Yeah. Okay, so Tiffy, if you have it, um, check out like the first, the first couple episodes, <laughs> like the first two or three, and see if you like it because that's how they kind of start out. You know what I'm saying? Like it's got. I tried. It's got a little bit. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give this. anything a try. I'll give that shit is funny. Thing. It's funny as hell though. I'm just like, you know, like Shorzy. I hear about this later. If I could watch Shorzy, I could watch anything. <laughs> so, Shorzy. Oh Shorzy. my God! You're not. Look. Look, all right, let, let's get it's Tiffany. A lot of heart. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot to. Here's a question that I didn't get to ask. He did a song with India Ari, and I wanted to ask him what yep. it was like to work with India Ari. Me too. Uh, I wanted to ask if, uh, you know, because I ain't gonna lie, one of the things that I took away the most was his. Uh, the the Steph question that led to him telling what happened on emancipation was was profound. That was fire so question. Fire no, question. Thank you. Fire I wanted question. to apologize too, bad Ty, for keeping going. I knew you had a thing, but no, you no. gave a lot of general answers, and I was like, I really want something specific that feels <laughs> unique to this moment. So I was like, Ooh, oh, don't in. apologize to me, okay. yo, Thanks. Steph. Uh, Steph, listen, I live for your questions. I'm not even going. Yes. I'm not, I'm not going to hold you. Yeah. Never like. Whenever you're here, like, Whenever I, I, I will take the back seat happily, <laughs> happily. Because really? I know the contribution I'm over here like, all right, F- oh my God. Okay. No, 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 no. Look, this is what I know. When Steph pulls up yes. with the notepad, 
Yes. It's about to be a good day, goddammit. When Steph got she, no she did her homework, it's when definitely she got going down. No pass, Tiffany, yeah. I'm telling you, get the fuck back. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a whole it's Oprah beautiful. moment. There's a whole yeah. 60 minutes. We ready. And when I saw this, okay. I was like, oh, we all even, contribute I was is what's important. I contribute vibes. <laughs> Tiffany, you do way more than that. Come on yeah, now. I just, I just want to know, what were you eating? Yeah, what was what was that? No, 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 thank you. It was an SI bowl, and that shit was I was fucking it up. I know <laughs> like, like I was watching you eat it, and you were just like you were trying not to make the mm, because was, I, and I, I was not you. gonna eat on camera. That was not my intention. But when you put my face up there, I'm doing like <laughs> middle right mid butt. I'm like, fuck it, we're here now. Like I might as well just eat my breakfast since that's what we're to be over here like this. It's like I swear. I do be forgetting sometimes that Tiffy's She's on the so West Coast. She's three hours behind us. Yes. And I be forgetting sometimes. She said breakfast. I was like, Bre I said, oh, shit, that's right. Yes. <laughs> I, was like, I wasn't going to eat, but I'm just like, this is delicious. I'm about to just enjoy it's my breakfast. Delicious. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm, like, Man, I'm like, yeah, tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to lie to you. When I was looking at you eating it, I was like, is that mashed potatoes and gravy? Like, what is that? Like, I was trying to figure it out. No, it was an SIE bowl, and it had, like, bananas, and I, I think I was strawberries? And it had, wait, it had bananas, strawberries, um, lots of shredded coconut, and honey. It was good. It was. Oh, oh damn. My fruit, we lost my coconut. Good, yeah. Absolutely. I had a it was, the other it was day. very smooth too. It was very smooth. It was nice it was. and melty. It was the perfect <laughs> amount of honey. And then I think I'm a sweetened shredded coconut girl now. Oh, <laughs> let me find <laughs> out. Okay. Um, a couple things that I was going to ask, and then we'll let we'll let everybody go ahead and get up out of here and enjoy our days. And for those watching, whether you uh watching live or on the replay, thank you again. Make sure you hit uh oh yeah. Listen to us on the actual, like, our podcast numbers are picking up, believe it or not. And we, I like, one of my biggest That's flaws fine. is not yeah. paying any mind to the audio portion of it. Like, I just look at us as a TV show. I ain't going to leave it. But Ty has been giving us the numbers. He's been keeping track of the uh, the numbers on audiobook. Uh, excuse me. Steadily on, on the rise. Steadily on the rise. And, and so. so the Spotify numbers, uh, what I think Apple Podcasts was the one that looks like it's, like, picking up. So for those listening Thank you for listening. Tell a friend, man. That's where it's got to be. We got. I got to start putting more info in, uh, 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 well, investment into investment. I'm telling everybody me. when I when I go places. I'm like, yo, like like you. But see, I normally say now. YouTube, yes, and I got to start being like Spotify and and see, Apple. But and I, I say I yeah. say all of it though. I'm like I'm like we're on all platforms that you can stream a podcast, and people are like, really? And I'm like, if you look us up, I'm like Google the New yeah, Blurred Order. I was Google. like, there's more than seven different places you can stream the New yeah. Blurred Order. I'm like, please check us out, and you know, like. That's that's a big thing. We we streaming all over the place, dog. We in this yeah, bitch. Man. I love it. I love it. Uh, so I didn't get to ask him, um, who his top five dead or alive hip hop artists were. That's that was what, something that, that was, I was interested yeah, in. I think he would have enjoyed that. that question. Um, I would have. I would have. If we had time, I would have done top five dead, then top five alive. But we lost that time. And then the other one was. Uh, <laughs> When is this rap process involve any medicinal products of sorts? Yes, uh, <laughs> um, you can check his Instagram and it will show you the answer. Yeah, is, yeah. I did, I, I, but see, some people are closeted medicinal participants. You know what I'm saying? And some people are outward medicinal participants. Those who live I in illegal states. Risk it that one. Those who live in illegal states are the closeted ones. Those who live in illegal states are the ones that are not. Closeted. Well, no, when you're in the industry. OK, yeah, that's true. you may not want to put that type of, you know, you may not, you know, there may be some projects that, you know, they be don't excluded from because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't want to put him on blast. I had it on my sheet, but I was like, if this is if we had if he's like, I'm there with y'all for the whole, you know, but I was like, nah, all right, that, that went back. So <laughs> those are my and, and another one about, you know, John Cho and what it was like to work. With, yeah, his uh, with his he's got a music, the second music video on there is that's what's that's, it's literally is hanging. Look, 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 on, look on his page, the second music video, him like in the shower or something like that. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, he's definitely. I, mean, I guess, I guess, if he was doing got one like movie. this big hanging out of his mouth, it's like yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah. But you could always say, yeah. "Oh, that was." Listen, listen, Snoop has changed the perspective of most Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if, if if him and Martha Stewart can sit on their show, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. Um, I'm, actually, I'm just you know, did you know they made them into elves on a shelves as well? You can get a Snoop. You can get a, a Snoop and a Martha, a little elf on the shelf. They're fucking adorable, by the way. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, did not, I did not know. Anymore, you got to check would, that shit out. It's funny. I would definitely look into that. Got to get a well, snoop guys, on a stoop. <laughs> Speaking of stoop, you know, this is making my lungs mighty hungry. Let's go ahead and wrap this up, man, so we can talk some stuff next week. Um, uh, From those of y'all at home, from you and your phones, from you and your cars, whatever, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Make sure y'all go hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the follow button, YouTube, Instagrams, and the Facebooks, and everything else, Twitch, Twitter, all the, or is it Twitter? Is it, what is it, X now? I heard it's like an X Twitter. Now. I it's only acknowledge Twitter. Twitter. It's still Twitter, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. it's my on Twitter, so I'm call on Twitter. Guys. Yeah, that's what the fuck it is. Um, and uh, be your authentic self, as we always say. Uh, on behalf of myself, Steph, Tiffy, Yaz, Bad Tie, as well as Nolly, Omar. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Drake. Drake. Oh, my bad, yeah. my bad. Bad no, Drake. No, 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 no. You're, you're, <laughs> the, you're, the, you're the sexy Drake. Drake. Let's get this right. <laughs> as well as Bad Tyrone Drake. and all others who have definitely grazed us. We just want to say thank you for pulling up and be your authentic self. If you ain't being yourself, then you're being fake. And since this, today was a little shorter, why don't you use the rest of your time to check out some of our other YouTube videos? Just youtube.com slash the new blurred order. Go ahead, write a comment, and we will respond maybe if it's good enough. And like I said, be yourself. You're not you're being fake. And if you're a geek, go ahead. If you're a geek like Boo, then let that geek flag fly. And since this is the end of the show, I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all go out on one of the black soup on Mr. on uh Mustafa, aka Moo, aka Effortless song from his album. Here it is. I'm a black superhero. I'm a black superhero. It's that iceberg slim, Nikki Giovanni, Shaft in the black Cadillac right behind me. Nat Turner would have burned a fine from the pews. Harried in the chariot, never miss a cue. Running fools out the room, make them lose their shoes. Mississippi Delta putting tussin on our blues. Too cool for school, we do for true. We knew the news before dude could move. I caught him in his chest like cuckoo could chew. Lottie daddy, his body laid out his crew. Mommy's kamikaze, blades out the womb. Hurry, hurry, not sorry, made out of doom. I side with the homie, call me if opportune. Pray like Islamis and bomb me in the tomb. It ain't hard to find me, my mind be in bloom. Assign me the boom, my kind be a loom. I'm not a murderer, but call me shocker, not the near 